Hello everyone, I'm Shobna Kapyarit and I'm part of the Oracle Analytics product management team. In this video, we will go over the release feature summary of 21.R3. Here's a quick overview of all the features released in 21.R3. We have extended the footprint of ERP analytics to projects and fixed assets. And we have also introduced a new subject area in procurement analytics, which is the requisition subject area. We will look at the details of each of these subject areas in the subsequent slides. Let's look at the key enhancements quickly. In general ledger analytics, we have enhanced the GL profitability and balance sheet subject area to do variance analysis. We have provided the capability to upload financial categories independent of Fusion ERP Cloud. In payables analytics, we have added two pre-built DVs, one for AP liabilities and another for AP aging. In receivables analytics, we enhance the AR aging subject area to include unapplied receipts and also analyze risk receipts. In procurement analytics, we updated purchase order and receipt subject area to use fiscal calendar attributes based on ledger of requisition business unit. We added some metrics to spend and purchase order subject area also, agreement subject area has been updated to use Gregorian calendar instead of fiscal calendar. We also made some updates to dimensions and attributes. Um, let's quickly look at those updates. In um, GL account analysis subject area, we included supplier site dimension. Also, we have included scenario and scenario description to GL profitability, GL balance sheet, and budget subject area. Budget scenario and budget description have been removed and replaced with these scenario dimension. In payables uh, AP expense subject area, we added project and asset attributes. Um, so you can analyze your AP data by these uh, project and asset attributes. In receivables analytics, um, we have added receipt business unit, receipt number, receipt date, and risk indicator to AR aging subject area in order to um, include the unapplied receipts. And also we added tax line number to AR revenue subject area. In employee expense analytics, uh, we have included project number, task number, and expenditure item date attributes. And uh, in procurement analytics, we have included quite a few attributes as I've shown here, supply category hierarchy, master organization name, item description, ledger, procurement, requisition and agreement, business units, negotiated indicator, discount, discount type, discount reason, business unit and shipping method. Now let's look at the details of these enhancements um, in the following slides. As part of this release, we have introduced project cost subject area, which will help project manager, project administrators, accountants to analyze project cost. The grain of this subject area is cost distribution lines and it shows all costs both accounted and unaccounted for unaccount for accounted cost distribution lines ledger account distributions are also available time anchoring is based on provider or expenditure gl date receiver gl date and uh, calendar is also supported as you can see, all of the key attributes um, that you look for for analyzing project cost is available. Project task, project type, um, expenditure type, expenditure org, work type, supplier, item, employee, job, non labor resource, expenditure item attributes, cost distributions, accounting details, all of these are available. In addition to this, we also support descriptive flex fields. Um, all of these descriptive flex fields related to project, task structure, project type, 
class categories, codes, expenditure categories, types, expenditure item, costing details, all of these descriptive flex fields are also available. So any of the BI enabled attributes in these DFFs will also be available for analysis. Um, in addition to these attributes, we also support expenditure org, project org, and uh, task hierarchy. Um, here are some DV projects. Um, these are just samples not available out of the box in this release. Um, these samples show you how you can analyze project cost um, and view a, a trend analysis of project costs how you can slice and dice the data by expenditure category or organization. Um, you can also look at which orgs are more billable. Um, all of these analysis can be done using the cost subject area. As a project accountant, you would like to see the cost distributions of all um, project um, costs. Um, no matter where it is sourced from. So you can see cause um, distribution lines that are sourced from, let's say, your supplier invoices from payables or, or from a supply chain um, transaction from your costing module or uh, a burden cost that is generated in the projects module, or it could be an external cost um, that is coming from um, an external application that has been transferred to project cost. So no matter what the sources, all cost distribu distributions that are available in the projects module uh, will be available in this subject area and you can um, view the cost distributions by account and period and uh, analyze the cost and also tie to GL. We have provided um, 21 cost metrics um, in each of these different currencies, project, project ledger, ledger, transaction, and uh, analytic currency. Here is a list of these. Um, different metrics. You have all the basic metrics like your raw cost, burden cost, burden cost. Um, these are also available as billable, non-billable, capitalizable, non-capitalizable metrics, labor cost, equipment cost, and all the various metrics are available here. Um, each of these metrics um, are also available um, in period-to-date, quarter-to-date, year-to-date, and inception-to-date uh, metrics. We have 20 each of these in project, project ledger, and analytic currency. These XTD metrics are supported using the project GL accounting um, calendar. In addition to these, we also provide six accounting metrics, accounted raw cost, accounted burden cost, accounted uh, burden cost, debit amount, credit amount, and net amount. And these metrics are available in transaction, analytic, and um, ledger currency. Um, if a secondary ledger is set up with the um, sub-ledger um, level conversion, then these metrics will also be available in the secondary ledger. In addition to these, we have added 22 predefined key performance indicators in the project ledger currency. Here is a sample deck um, showing the um, KPIs used um, for executive consumption. Next, we'll move on to project commitments. Project commitment subject area. Um, is at the grain of the commitment lines. Um, in this release, we have provided uh, a basic commitment subject area, which gives you visibility into current commitments. Um, like project cost subject area, this uh, commitment subject area is also available, uh, also supports the project, project ledger, ledger document and analytic currency. Um, all of the key attributes that are available in project cost subject area are also um, available in commitment subject area. Um, again, the descriptive flex fields are also supported. Um, in addition to this, um, project managers can um, 
look at the overall cost by getting the project um, cost from the project cost subject area and the commitment or the future cost from commitment subject area and look at the overall cost um, for the project. And uh, in, in the future release, we plan to add some additional uh, metrics um, in addition to the committed raw cost, burden cost, and committed cost. Now let's move on to asset analytics. Um, in this release, we have released two new subject areas, asset analysis and asset transaction. This will help customers using fixed assets in Fusion ERP Cloud. Um, their financial analysts and accountants can now use these um, subject areas to analyze assets data. Asset analysis subject area is focused on operational financial analysis of fixed assets at the grain of individual asset, which can be aggregated to the asset category level, books, assignments, location, etc., for the asset calendar period. It also enables trend analysis for cost, network value, depreciation related metrics. Asset transaction subject area, on the other hand, zooms into the details of individual transactions during life cycle of assets like additions, retirements, adjustments, etc., along with accounting distributions by fiscal period, which should tie to GL. It also supports asset category, asset invoices, and asset retirement descriptive criteria. We've also provided 12 predefined KPIs and one out-of-the-box data visualization project that helps analyze asset activity. As you can see here, it provides trailing 12-month trend of current cost and net book value, helps track your asset life by category, shows the top 10 assets that are approaching end of life, which will help um, Analyst uh, plan on asset replacement, also a view of top 10 assets by cost. Um, and all of these can be filtered by asset category, location, asset type, book name, um, ledger, and so on. Next, let's move on to procurement analytics. As I mentioned, we have introduced a requisition subject area in this release. Um, this, along with other procurement subject areas, will help procurement analysts to analyze starting from requisitions all the way to receipts and help analyze purchasing performance. Requisition subject area is at the grain of distribution and supports all requisitions except ones in incomplete status. We support both fiscal and Gregorian calendar and all key attributes and headers, lines, and distributions um, are available for analysis. Transaction unit of measure is supported in this release and in a future release, we plan to support primary um, unit of measure. Descriptive flex fields in headers, lines, and distributions of purchase requisition are supported um, in this release. We uh, also provided 32 metrics in all, um, including cycle time, quantity related documents, and analytic currency metrics. Also, we have added nine predefined KPIs in analytic currency to our KPI library and also one out-of-the-box visualization project that summarizes the performance analysis from requisitions to receipt. Um, this DB provides insights on past due, projections, cancellations, and over-received quantity person by different dimensions. Now let's look at the enhancements in general ledger analytics. Like I mentioned, we have enhanced GL balance sheet and GL profitability subject area to include scenario dimension. 
This allows customers to do variance analysis between budgets and actuals. Until prior to release, these subject areas only had actuals and budgets data were available in real budget subject area. And uh, for some of our profitability and balance sheet metrics like EBITDA and others that are based on financial categories, customers were required to build those equivalent metrics in real budgets in order to do the comparison. Now, with this enhancement, Variance analysis can be performed using the GL profitability or GL balance sheet subject area for all of the metrics that are available in these subject areas like EBITDA or revenue or assets and so on. The GL balance sheet and profitability subject area has the um, scenario dimension and all of the actual data will have the scenario dimension value as actuals. In order to see the uh, budget-related data, customers will have to activate a new functional area called GL budget analysis. And this will provide um, the customers with the budget data in these subject areas, as well as the GL budget subject area. And uh, with, with this budget data in GL profitability and GL balance sheet, customers can do um, actual versus budget analysis. And here are some sample um, analysis that customers can do. You can see an actual versus budget trend uh, by period. You can look at your actuals versus budget data in a tabular format or a graphical format. Um, and here, you know, you can see variance as a percentage of budget. So here are, uh, you know, some of the examples um, that um, you can do with this new enhancement. In addition to this, we have uh, added supplier side dimension to GL account analysis. These uh, supplier side attributes um, can be seen in this picture. Next, let's look at um, this new feature that we have added in um, 21.R3 that provides customers the ability to upload financial categories in FAW. Um, customers have been requesting for this feature as they some of the customers do not want to update the financial categories in Fusion ERP Cloud. Such customers now have the ability to um, map their natural account to financial categories or add additional financial categories, custom financial categories that are not defined in Fusion um, ERP Cloud. And uh, also um, customers wanted the ability to have um, multi-segment financial category mapping. So for example, if you want to combine your cost center and natural account and map to um, a financial category, let's say you want to, um, you want to segregate your internal revenue, um, intercompany revenue and external um, revenue, you can combine your cost center and natural account and um, do the mapping. Now, all of this mapping can be done in FAW without updating anything in Fusion ERP Cloud. In order for you to use this feature, you will need to update um, the allow financial category upload attribute in the reporting config um, of ERP to yes. The default value for this is no, but if you would like to update the financial categories in FAW instead of ERP Cloud and use it, you should set this to yes. And once you set this to yes, you would be able to upload your financial categories, um, mapping and assignments in FAW. And this mapping will be used in the GL balance sheet and GL profitability subject areas uh, for all of the metrics that are available there. Next, let's look at payables analytics. 
As I mentioned, we have introduced two new DV projects, one for liability and another for aging. Uh, both are available in ledger currency. The DV project for liability is a continuation of the enhancements we are doing in um, liability subject area. This provides customers the ability to look at liability balance by um, supplier and also look at detailed open invoices um, by supplier or by liability account as of a certain accounting date. Also, the aging um, analysis, um, as you can see, gives you a monthly trend analysis, an outstanding trend analysis, an ability to look at your um, overdue invoice count and amount and, and so on. In addition to this, we have added key project attributes and asset attributes to AP expense subject area. And this uh, provides customers to analyze the AP um, data by your asset or project attributes. We've also added um, project number, task number, and expenditure item date attributes to employee expense um, analytics, uh, ex employee expense analysis subject area. And um, this will allow our customers to look at employee expense by project attributes. Um, here is a sample DV to show how um, you can analyze your expense report by project or by expenditure type. This is just a sample um, DV that we have shown. Now let's look at receivables analytics enhancements. We have enhanced AR aging subject area to include unapplied receipts and metrics. Until prior release, AR aging only provided um, the open invoice information. It did not have the unapplied receipts and that did not give a true balance, um, true customer balance. Now with this enhancement, um, you will be able to see a true customer balance since it has both your invoice, open invoices as well as unapplied receipts. This subject area also um, helps you look at receipts at risk, which are receipts that are not yet cleared. So the risk indicator would be set to yes for these receipts and you will be able to see the risk amount. Also, we have added tax line number to AR revenue um, subject area, which will help you look at the um, tax details with the tax line number. Next, let's look at the procurement analytics uh, enhancements in purchase orders and receipts subject area. Fiscal calendar attributes are now based on the ledger associated with the requisition business unit. Um, the DEX, CARDS, KPIs based on purchase orders and receipt subject area also use the requisition business unit to get fiscal calendar attributes. Agreement um, subject area no longer has the fiscal calendar attributes, but instead um, the Gregorian calendar attributes are available and these attributes are used for uh, the KPIs and visualization projects as well. In spend subject area, we have introduced a new metric called invoice price variance. And in the purchase order subject area, we have included quite a few metrics um, as listed here, supplier count, rejected quantity percent, over receipt quantity percent, canceled quantity, negotiated amount, over receipt amount, open PO amount, closed PO amount, uh, open PO count, closed PO count, and so on. All of these metrics um, can be used in your um, DV projects for analysis. With this, we come to the end of this 21.R3 release feature summary. For more videos on analytics, please visit our website. Thank you.